I'm Dr. Adam Friedman, Professor and Chair of Dermatology at GW. And there's always something exciting about acne being the most common inflammatory skin disease. And I think the most exciting thing has been an ongoing message, which is all acne is inflammatory. The perception of non-inflammatory, inflammatory lesions, while clinically that may be true from an appearance perspective, not so much under the surface. There's always inflammation. And so that really warrants the need for both topical and even systemic anti-inflammatory activity. Now, I think what's been really incredible innovation is in getting the best from our anti-inflammatory antibiotics without the mess of antimicrobial resistance. And this refers to uh, off-label, low-dose doxycycline, whether it be controlled release or split up throughout the day, sub-antimicrobial dosing, or more recently, narrow-spectrum antibiotics that really only target what you need to, here being C. acne, the culprit that really drives disease from many different factors. Um, and what we just recently learned, it was recently published, is that sericycline actually has two binding sites uh, at the ribosomal level. And what that means is that bacteria just cannot develop resistance when you have a two-type hit because they can't jump like that. They can't do a two evolutionary jump. They really only do one. So that really gives us a lot of uh, encouragement when using a long-term non-antibiotic antibiotic, both from an efficacy standpoint, but also safety standpoint. So being the most common disease, we need to be mindful that that inflammation, even subclinical, leads to more disease, but also leads to the sequelae that we know so well now drives a lot of the impact on quality of life, especially in those with darker skin tones who are almost destined to get post-inflammatory pigment alteration and scarring. So key messages, be aggressive, use the tools we have, and use the data we have to make the right choices when thinking about that long-term therapy.